of the Lord. Let's try that again. Praise the Lord, everybody. And everybody ought to praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We are excited to be here at the New Beginning Church. Amen. Help me to appreciate this praise team. Amen. And the band. Come on, y'all. Ministry. Thank God for the worshipers. Amen. And the band. God bless you. Shortly, I want to thank my good friend in my small circle of friendship. Amen. You don't need a bunch of folks, but you do need a few good friends. And I want to thank Pastor Matthew Davis and Lady Davis. Amen. For giving me this invitation. Amen. Amen. with you on this Sunday morning in his absence. Certainly we give all reference, respect and praise unto our God. Yeah. Amen. Who is the head of my life and the bishop of my soul. Respect yeah. to all the officers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're excited to be here. My wife is with me of 41 years. Stand yeah. baby. Yeah. 41 years. I tease and I say, baby, you are really an old lady now. You, I said, I could say the true meaning, that's my old lady. You know, back in the day, guys, we had this thing they called your girlfriend white, that's my old lady. I said, baby, you turned 65, you got your shingle shot, and you got your social security check. That's, that's when you officially old when you got all three of them. Amen, but that's my ministry partner. Amen. And, uh, 41 years in ministry, and we are grateful. Amen. There's a word from the Lord on this morning, amen, that God has put in my heart. And let us approach God's word with just a moment of prayer. Father, how we thank you, and we bless you just because of who you are. We give you glory, honor, and praise. You've been so good to us, better than we could ever be to ourselves. Thank you for your provisions. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your peace, God. We thank you for all that you have done for us. And we give you praise on this morning. Now, if you would be so careful and kind, God, as to remove us from our own selves. I pray that no flesh would dwell in itself. But, Lord, we, even as the praise team sang, we invite your anointing, God, to fall upon us. Use me for thine own glory. God, hold my mind and God, my thoughts. Speak through these lips of clay. Give me what to say, God, and how to say it to these, your people, God. And I pray, God, that through the hearing, and not just the hearing, but the receiving of the word of God, that some lost soul may cry out, what must I do to be saved? Would surrender their hearts and lives unto you, God, and say yes to your will and yes to your way. This is our prayer. We thank you and we praise you. It is in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. One of the big questions we're faced with today in our meager evangelistic efforts to win the loss to Christ post-pandemic. You can take your seats. I'll get to my scripture in just a moment. But, 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 but one of the major questions we have to deal with, to those that may even be trying to evangelize, because we all got lazy during the pandemic. Right. Let's be real. Right. But, but, but here is the question we're faced with as so-called believers or Christians. Why? If this came to you from the world, this came to you from a heathen, if this came to you from a person that don't know Christ, why would I want to be a Christian when the Christians I've met aren't the kind of people I would want to be? What would your apologetic defense be when challenged with this type of legitimate question? It is a legitimate question. This type of thinking from the non-believer 
focuses on what the Christian believes. It does not focus on what the Christian believes, but it focuses more on how the Christian behaves. Yeah, right. right. see, see, some people actually think that Christianity is not for them because of particular rituals that they find confusing or hard to believe. We made this thing that God intended not to be hard, too hard for people. Uh -huh. There are others to object because we've added so many rigid rules and regulations that God never required. And so it's confusing. Others object to becoming a Christian and they stay away because they find so many so-called Christians unloving, all right, all right. unkind, all right. downright hateful and unforgiving as if you and I have never had the need to be forgiven. In fact, it's often, I have too, sister. In fact, it's often the behavior of Christians which leads people to re-examine and question the claims of the Christian faith. So my argument is our poor behavior can prevent people from believing. Watch this. There are no shortage of quotations that show this reality of people rejecting the faith because they find the behavior of Christians problematic. Let me give you a few. In history past, Gandhi once said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christian. Because your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Mark Twain said it this way. If Christ were here, there's one thing he would not be, and that is a Christian. Her king, I quote, said it this way. The trouble with born-again Christians is that they are even bigger pain the second time around. There's some truth to that. And just by chance, you didn't appreciate those historical quotes. Let me give you a quote from the Word of God where the Apostle Paul has something to say to us in this matter found in his epistle to the Romans chapter 2. I'm going to only read for your hearing verses 28 and 29. Look with me, Romans chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Hear ye the word of the Lord. It says, for no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly, nor is circumcision outward and physical. But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. God, a blessing to the reading here in obedience of his holy word. Thank you for standing out of respect for the word of God. I want to speak from this thought on this morning. Making a Christian claim right. without having a Christ-like conduct. Okay. <laughs> Making a Christian claim without having a Christ-like conduct. In Romans chapter 2, verses 17 through 29. We learned the Apostle Paul, he lands squarely on the issue of duplicity. If you don't understand that, I'll say it like this, double standards. If you don't understand that, I'll say it like this, hypocrisy being a hypocrite. Or if you want it really raw, two-faced it. You get that one. Now, though he speaks explicitly about the Jews of his day in the text, application-wise, we would do well to pay close attention to what he says because the question that comes to my mind regarding the modern-day church is, has base empty religion replaced a blessed godly relationship? Uh -huh. Let me say it again. Has base empty religion Replace a real, relevant, godly relationship. This is not one of those messages where I say, turn to your neighbor or hunt your neighbor. No, turn within. Let's all look deep within our own hearts and soul. 
The church today is good at boasting of our strong belief, yes. But we're very poor in our display of bad, weak behavior. In Paul's address, amen, to the Romans, he understands that circumcision was fundamental to the Jews. It symbolized the covenant between God and Abraham's descendant. You can read the context, the historical background in Genesis chapter 17. But it was the expression of Israel's national identity and was a requirement for all Jewish men. Circumcision was a physical reminder to the Jews of their national heritage and privilege. Many were confident that it sealed their position with God. But just as having the law did not make a person right with God, neither was circumcision in itself a cause for confidence. See, we put confidence in the wrong thing. To be circumcised was only worthwhile if God's law was followed and obeyed. The praises we sing, amen, can only be deemed as honorable and accepted by God if we live it out the praise. If we're walking in the truth of the praise. Yeah, you can sing a lie just like you can tell a lie. So to be circumcised uh, and yet break God's law was no better, Paul is arguing, than not being circumcised at all. Because what God desires most from his people is a pure, obedient heart. Amen. Amen. So we must be very careful today when we don't, that we don't become a slave to empty religious rituals. And with the cultural shift, everything has shifted over the last four or five years. It's been shifting, but a major shift coming out of the past. The folks have gotten lazy. They don't think they need the church. They stay home and they can be in church. If you can be in the mall on the beach, you can be in church. That's the only pastor invited me to preach. He didn't tell me what to preach. He said, Pastor, you know you're going to be in the Word. So let's not miss out on the reality of having a real, relevant relationship with the Father. Three principles I want to examine from this text as we consider the problem of making a claim without the conduct to authenticate that claim. The first problem I see, and I call these folks cultural Christians. You have spiritual Christians, then you have cultural Christians. They, they just go with the culture. They will shift and adapt to anything. It's not biblical. It's not sound. It's not God-like, amen, but we'll pick it up and we'll embrace it. The, the, the first problem I see with these kind of folks is they have merely a profession. They merely profess religion. Verses 17 through 20. That they merely make a claim. Have no conduct to authenticate the claim, but they just make a claim. At one point, it's popular off and on to say, oh, I'm a Christian. Anybody can say that. You're making a claim. But where is your conduct? I'm told that the best way to determine a type of tree is look at the fruit it bears. Right, right, right. You won't get confused. Right. If bananas or apples are hanging on the tree, you're not going to say, oh, that's a grapefruit tree because you can identify with an apple. Am I talking to anybody? A, a religionist, this cultural Christian is a person who's interested in religion. Yeah. But, 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 but only just acknowledges it. Has no intention of living it. Have no intention of demonstrating its truth. Our hearing should turn into learning and action. Our talking ought to be matched with our walking. And because of the Jews' extreme interest in religion, they were looked upon as the epitome of the religionists. There are basically two types of religionists. Uh -huh. The first is there are those who feel they are good enough for God just as they are. Yeah. I don't need to change nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of who I am. Mm -hmm. I like me just the way I am. Well, You might need to work on stuff, but I don't. <laughs> don't see nothing wrong. 
Deliver me from people who don't feel they still can grow yeah. and can learn yeah. and can progress. Yeah. That means they feel they're good enough. They feel they are doing enough good for God to accept them just as they are. No need for change. No need for correction. Well, no need for growth. Amen. I mean, I may have done a little wrong, but not enough to keep me out of heaven. Well, you know, I, I, I may have done a little sin. Sin is sin. Regardless of who it's in. Amen. And the only way to get rid of sin is to remove the I out of the middle of the S and the N. If you take I out of sin, you can't pronounce the word. It bounds up because it's two consonants. Sin, yeah, yeah, sin, yeah. sin. Uh -huh. The problem is I got to get out of the middle of the S and the N. I wish I had somebody. Yeah. These persons go about living as they wish, worshiping God only enough to satisfy their conscience. And vast majority of people are in this class. They're called self-righteous. Watch this. Proverbs 30 and 12 warns there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. That's book. So you have those who feel they're good enough as they are, but then you have those who have a sensitive conscience and feel the need to give themselves to good works as much as humanly possible. So they think they can work their way into God's favor. Uh -huh. These people work and do good to try to secure favor from God. They believe that good works is what it takes to make them righteous and to build them up in God's eyes. You won't get saved by works, but if you are saved, you will work. Salvation is by grace and through faith. It has nothing to do with you and I. It is a gift of God. It is made man, sir. Thank you, my sister, for witnessing the truth. It is made man corner here. Amen. So we, we don't 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 get it twisted. Now, okay, Galatians two and sixteen. Paul writes this, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Right. Even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. All right. So you see why the religionists merely professes religion and participate in rituals, why he has a claim but no conduct. In contrast, the true believer does not follow religion. He follows Jesus Christ. He does not follow the cultural shift. He does not follow what's popular. He does not cater because you're in the minority. And the majority is anti-Christ. So the real believer has relationship, not rules and rituals. But then the second problem I see uh, with the cultural Christian uh, is they have no relationship to live out what he professes. Uh -huh. the, the first problem is they merely profess his religion. But then secondly, they have no relationship to live out what they profess. The claimer. That's what I call them, because they have no conduct. The <laughs> cultural claimer fails to live out what he professes. Watch this. Because you cannot live out the truths of God if he's not living in you. You can't live out what's not already in you. Uh -huh. This is seen in several pointed questions in the text. Watch with me. Look back in your Bible, verse 21 through 24. Paul asked the question in verse 21a. He said, you who teach others, do you not teach yourself? All right, now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This question is not only for teachers, but it's for everyone because we all teach right. others. You're yeah. teaching when you ain't trying to teach. Right. 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 Your, your children watch you. Yeah. Yeah. Your friends watch you. Your yeah. colleagues yeah. are watching you. You're teaching when you're not trying to teach. Right. Yeah. So the question is not just for teachers. Throughout all of life, we all claim to know some truths about morality, about how people should live, how people should behave. We all share those truths with our children, with our friends, with our co-workers, with, with our colleagues. But when we share and teach, 
Do we not listen to that same teaching ourselves? Push Paul. This cannot be a do as I say, not as I do. First of all, if I'm teaching, I'm supposed to be the ultimate example of what I'm teaching. I'm human. I'm man. I, I can fail. I don't try. I certainly don't. But I try to be the best example I can to the members of Victory in Jesus Church. All right. Amen. And I don't skip over the Bible. Uh-huh. If I have to skip over it, that means I'm guilty of something that I can't talk about because it's too convicted. All right. That's right. I preach all of it if it's in there. Uh-huh. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You say, you who teach others, do you not teach yourself? What right do you have to tell others how to live if you're not living right? Now, I know y'all living right here in New Beginning. I know your path. But that other church down the street crossed the track. <laughs> Amen. The sin of hypocrisy. A sin committed by so many claimers. Jesus said in Matthew 23 and 28, Even so, ye outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Uh-huh. Luke 6 and 46 say, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? All right. All right. Not only do Paul says in verse 21a, You who teach others, do, not, do you not teach yourself? He says in 21b, You who say that a person should not steal, do you steal? All right. <laughs> Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to try this. I took a risk. I, I did this in victory. But uh, uh, all the thieves stand. All the thieves. All the thieves stand. And they reacted to me just like y'all do. Everybody just laughed. I said, okay, okay. All right. Let me try it another way for you. Okay, okay. So all of you who God has blessed with jobs and have income, but you don't give the tithe and offering, stand. <laughs> you still a thief? Will a man rob God? Oh, oh. I say, now, all you who got income, you buying everything you want, but you ain't giving nothing to God, you stand. And they laughed at me again. They, no one wants to stand. Listen, Jesus, you was human, but he always had a point to the human. This is a challenging, heart penetrating trust. And you who say a person should not steal, do you not steal? We were run down stories on the news about guys ripping grandmother's purses out of their hand, stealing and taking. Go out and get a job. You said it, I've said it, watch the story. But do you not steal? Is that not thievery? If, if God say, God say, I'm going to bless you with 100%, keep 90 Give me a 10. I'm going to bless you with $10. Just give me one. I'm going to bless you with a dime, a silver dime. Just give me one penny. Uh, when you break it down like that, shame on us. He gets even more deep in 22a. He say, you who say that a person should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? Oh, yeah. Paul oh, gets deep. Then he said, verse 22b, you who uphold idols, do you commit sacrilege? The word sacrilege means to violate one's commitment to God and to rob from God. It means to consider something more important than God. The time you ought to be given to God, you're given to something else. Because you literally said, that's more important to me. So if you're talking about God, you're talking about something else. Your sports team, your favorite entertainer. I'm trying to say it, mother. <laughs> You've given it to God. Think about what he said. We make him claims, but don't have the conduct to authenticate the claim we make it. I would argue in my clothes and stop making the claim if you don't have a conduct to match it. Mm-hmm. Amen. You make something else more important than God. This is one of the major sins of the claim. But matter of fact, in Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16, he says, take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Then Isaiah 42 and 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name 
and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. All right. You have to be careful. We, we, we look at idols as Old Testament. They're modern day idols. All right. Your car can become an idol. Right. Your job can become an yeah. idol. Yeah. Your boo can become an idol. Your, your spouse. You have to be careful. Your money, you can idolize, talk about it always over and over. Yeah. Amen. And then lastly, say verse 23, you who boast and take pride in the law, the Bible, though breaking the law, do you not dishonor God? Oh, no. Claimers with no conduct. Mm. And then third and lastly, the claimer or culture Christian thinks that ceremony is the way to God's approval. Mm. Paul says in verse 25, circumcision, the surgical ritual that marks you as a Jew, it's great if you live in accord with God's law. But if you don't, it's worse than not being circumcised. First of all, I, I, I don't know, this is just me. But, but I think I think God may have a greater tolerance for just a hardcore, downright dirty sinner. Because they ain't portraying nothing. They ain't trying to be something. Not. They just hardcore, downright dirty. They know they're going to hell. They know they're in their sin. But, 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 but one who act like they were God, but then they find out being downright dirty with the heathen, they, they, they one way, then they another. That the, the hypocrisy comes from the theme of wearing a mask. You know, in theater, Actors portray a character that they are not. Right, yeah. uh, Denzel Washington once said he was so good at his craft when he made training day. The pastor at the church had to pause the people because they were staying away from him, detouring. He was so visible in that hardcore role as a thug that people forgot that's not who he really is. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't we just be real? Yeah. Amen. And, and, and relevant. Amen. And, and, and when we in the minority amongst the heathen still declare Jesus. Push ball. Mm -hmm. We don't know an organization that's gone silent. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is getting louder mm -hmm. with their agendas. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is, is out in your face mm -hmm. with what they believe. Mm -hmm. And Christians hovering down. We, we're getting quiet. We, yeah. we, it's yeah. like we're losing our voice. Yeah. And the enemy is picking up more steam. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. And so we, we have to understand it's not about a ceremony. It's not about communion. It's not about church membership. It's not about church baptism. Okay, this is what Paul is saying, basically. He says, for example, take the ceremony of communion, church membership, baptism. It goes like this. Church membership profits a man if he keeps the law but if he breaks the law his church membership is uncounted or unchurched <laughs> baptism is okay if you keep the law but if he break it then he's unbaptized yeah, yeah. you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. communion is okay if he keep the law but he break the law you're uncommunion un mm -hmm. he said you ain't no better than them Gentile the folks out there who never been circumcised if you're not going to keep the law. All right, okay. So stop pride yourself on, on, on lineage and heritage. Now, I've been circumcised, but you are no better than an uncircumcised Jew. Right. No wow. Mm -hmm. This is heavy, God. Because no ritual, the point is, can make man acceptable unto God. Being acceptable to God is not an outward thing. The point is obedience. The Holy Spirit ruling and reigning in your heart. You can't escape him. He's omnipresent. And so with God, it's not a matter of outward conformity. It's not a matter of dressing up. It's not a matter of carrying the KJV Bible. It's not a matter of wearing a crown around, a chain around your neck. It's not a matter of whose name you baptize in. It's not a matter of your name on the rope. All that's ritual. And counts for nothing in and of itself if there's an obedience in your life and walk right, to God. Right, right. And we like to put on in front of folks. Right, right, right. I have this to say. I say, folks, 
can be messy on Mondays. <laughs> they turn terrible on Tuesdays. They get wicked on Wednesdays. They become tolerable on Thursdays. They get fickle on Fridays. They get sassy on Saturdays. And how the nerd want to be saved again on Sunday? <laughs> you can't do it. All right. That's hypocrisy. God is not pleased with that. Let me close because y'all not enjoying it. Right. True circumcision. True circumcision is a matter of the heart. Not just a literal cutting of the body. But the spiritual reality of surgery on the old man. Unregenerate nature. God judges according to the secrets of the heart. Romans 2 and 16. So that he's not impressed with outward Formalities. We impress each other with outward stuff. Yeah. We saw dress up for anniversary, man. We go buy new threads. We color coordinate and all that. What attention do we put on the enemy? We dress up the outside. But how does it look on the inside? How does it look? He closes by saying the important thing is praise of God, not the praise of of men. There's a story told of a saloon keeper. And a saloon keeper decided to sell his tavern to the local church. The members came in, they were excited to have a new location. They they tore out all the bar and they added lights and they gave the whole tavern a fresh coat of paint and they installed pews and, and, and somehow uh, the, the, the tavern owner had left his parrot up in the rack. The parrot that belonged to the saloon when it was saloon. And so on Sunday morning that colorful bird was watching from the rafters and when the minister appeared he said, what? No landlord. No landlord. When the men who were to lead praise and worship came out, he said, ah, new stage show, new stage show. <laughs> then he looked around at all the people, he said, ah, say no crowd, say no crowd. <laughs> Y'all will get it later. <laughs> new landlord, this is not the farmer no more. New stage show, they were singing and praising, not the saloon. Oh, the same old crowd. <laughs> the folks that's excited about getting the time reminded for the church was always going to the... <laughs> All right, I close with this. The church in the United States, seriously, regardless of the denomination. By the way, all these different denominations a man created. You'll, you'll never know where can you find Jesus talking about denominations. One fella don't like what another fella teach. He break off and start something else. Don't go follow him. Denominations has brought more division and cardinality to the body of Christ than anything, y'all. It's divided, folks. I love a brother or sister for their spirit. I don't, I don't wear these flags and denominational games. I, I had a good Catholic brother that was a friend of mine. I had a good Methodist minister. We swapped poor pits. Baptist. I, I look at a man's spirit. And if they walk it in truth, that integrity. But, but, but regardless of the denomination, the church in the years has a tremendous crisis of credibility issue, whether we want to admit it or not. We, we realize that some non-Christians, especially those in media, they want to characterize Christians as hypocritical whenever the opportunity arises. But I do wonder how much of what they say might be true and deserve. Now certainly not all of it, there are good people. There are people living everything they can. There are great pastors. I believe you have one. There are great churches. God don't look at size. God don't count numbers. God make numbers count. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and so the, the, those things are not the issue. There are times, though, when the gap between our preaching and our practicing resembles a canyon rather than a ditch. And so we got to close that gap. And our critics 
might be correct when they dutifully point out this. Stephen Cole, DTS professor of Bible exposition, he said in a published article that the most difficult people to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ, contrary to what you believe, are not the Jewish, are not the Muslims, are not the Hindus, are not the Buddhists, are not the Mormons, are not the Catholic, are not the Orthodox, are not the Pentecostals, are not the Baptists, he said, but the most difficult people to reach are the religious, ritual-based people who trust in their religion rather than trusting in a sovereign God. All right. All right. Amen, amen, amen. We cannot elevate religion yes. and man-made stuff over our creator, right. over God. His yes. word reigns yes. supreme. Yes. We got an issue. What does the Bible say about it? Watch it. Everybody has an opinion. Yeah, yeah. I might be senior pastor at Victory and Jesus, but every member has an opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you operate with everybody making an opinion? Let's see with this problem. What does the Bible say? Where's our precedent in Scripture? Amen. God has addressed everything that we need. New beginning. Many claim a stink. The performance and claim of their religious rituals will somehow commend them to God. They won't. They lack the reality of a real relationship with the true and living God on the heart level. And the last thing I want to say is we cannot afford to proclaim one ethic and live another. We cannot afford to have a great claim to Christ, but no matching Christian conduct. You know the story over 2,000 years ago, oh, yeah. how Jesus came yes. as a man, took on the form of man, born yeah. of a virgin Mary, in a stall, wrapped yeah. in swaddling clothes, lived a sinless life, yeah. debated with the doctors of law, yeah. did good, yeah. but they mocked him, they scandalized, they lied on him, marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall, beat him down, yeah. unrecognizable, yeah. made him bear his own crutch. Hey, watch this. I'm going somewhere. All along, he's making the claim. Yes. I, am. I am. You have said so. Yes. I, am. I am. Here's the time to get out. Marched him up. Go, God, let's heal. Yes. Stretched him wide. Nailed him tight. Breathed him out. Yes. Trapped him low. Yes. You can't hold on to that claim, but look yes. at his conduct. He hung on in there. Yes. He hung, suffered, bled, died. David's head to where thorns for David's side, to be spear for David's eyes, to cry for David's feet, to be striped for us. He died, locked his head in the cradle of his shoulder, and gave up the ghost, put him in a bar or two, and three days later, the conduct of his claim, he got up with all power in his hand, and because he lived, it gets even better. We have to be with the Father, but send us back the Holy Ghost. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I'm his own. And the claim that I make, the Holy Spirit gives me the power to have a matching conduct. Come on and clap your hands and give him praise in the Lord. May God bless you. May God keep you. That is our time. Amen. I trust that he said something that may have helped you encourage you, amen, amen. that you found edifying. The goal is to continue to be built up and established in the faith. We want to pause. There may be one either here in present or viewing by social media that have never come to know Jesus Christ as a part of your sin. And you know you not only have a pastor, but you have an evangelist here in Pastor Davis. But I would be remiss in my preaching if I didn't pause to at least extend an opportunity for someone to come to Christ. God bless you, man. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless you, my brother. That may be a mother. Amen. That may be a mother. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. That may be another. Is there another? I'm going to spend a few moments with this brother. Amen. That may be another. Look, if you're about social media, you don't have to be in the church 
right where you are. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, thou might. Thou might. Y'all gonna let me get away with that? Thou shalt, yeah, thou shalt be saved. Ain't no guesswork about it. It's not supposed to be complicated. Whoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Would you bow your heads in prayer when I spend a moment ministering to this young brother? How you doing, man?
make your checks out to the New Beginning Church. Amen. Jr., 
laborers for the harvest and world peace. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Smile at your neighbor, hug them, or shake their hand and say, We win. God bless you, new beginning. Amen.